You've been a good and faithful servant, Severus. But only I can live forever. My lord. I always wonder what was going through Severus Snape's mind at that very moment. He knew that once Voldemort made up his mind to do something, there was no changing it. Every decision was final. Voldemort's way of displaying that he had no doubt within him. When he decided to kill Snape, that was also final, and Snape was all too aware that he was mere moments away from certain death. However, he still held his calm, and up until those final moments, he tried to convince the Dark Lord that the wand was loyal only to him. I think the late Alan Rickman really needs to be commended for how well he played this role, but after 8 movies and many incredible displays of acting, those last few moments of Snape's life were simply off the charts in terms of acting talents. What's unusual about his death is that Voldemort didn't use the killing curse, and I know what you're thinking. The Elder Wand, it's because of the Elder Wand. Guys, I'm telling you, that is only scratching the surface. So let's not wait any longer. It's time to uncover why Voldemort really didn't use the Killing Curse on Snape. Now guys, I know many of you have looked at the video title, you've clicked to watch the video and right away you're thinking, this is definitely centred around the Elder Wand. Well I can't deny that the Elder Wand has something to do with it, but it's really not the centre point for the video. There's a lot more to it, and that a lot more is basically looking at things from Voldemort's point of view, and how he not only approaches the situation with killing Snape, but how he approaches killing anyone, as he views magic in a different way than most wizards and witches, and that's the first thing I want to look at, before we actually get to what happens with Snape. Trust me when I tell you, after I explain it, Snape's death will make a lot more sense in general, not just about how it relates to the Elder Wand. So, let's take a look at the Dark Lord's view of magic to start with. Voldemort really genuinely embraced magic. He based his entire life around becoming the greatest wizard to ever exist. He thought of magic as the most incredible gift and in order to wield a wand, one has to be worthy of magic in the first place and if they weren't, like Muggleborns and actually Muggles in general, the Dark Lord loved nothing more than using magic to torture and end their lives. In fact, nothing pleased him more than seeing that bright green light leave his wand and instantly steal his victim's life. Just like that, in the blink of an eye, that's what he did. Now I want you to keep this in mind as we move forward with the video. So something that is quite common amongst many Harry Potter fans is that they get confused about Voldemort's lack of awareness about love, for having no understanding of emotions at all. They confuse the two as if he's never known what it's like to be happy, which is not the point. The man doesn't spend all day every day experiencing no joy. Sure, he took pleasure and happiness from torturing and killing people. We've seen his anger, fury and rage, but because he's not seen as compassionate in any way, it kind of just floats to the back of my mind that the Dark Lord could actually care about the well-being of others, which he did. He wanted his best Death Eaters to be in good health as they were most useful to him if they were safe and basically alive. Now there's been Death Eaters who've failed missions for him, who haven't got the job done, Death Eaters who've openly betrayed him, and he dealt with them all, but someone who's always been consistent, someone who's always been there and delivered was Severus Snape. Let's not forget it was Snape who first warned Voldemort about the prophecy in the first place, which I'm sure the Dark Lord was grateful to him for. It seemed for every success Snape had for his master, the more respect he earned. Also it's important to note that the single and only reason Snape became a double agent was because of his love for Lily. Nothing else, no change of heart, nothing. So as brave as Snape actually was, he was still no saint, he committed crimes just like the rest of the Death Eaters. Anyway, he was highly valued by Lord Voldemort, that's for sure. Even on the Dark Lord's return, when Snape didn't show up at the graveyard, 
His off-screen or off-page explanation to the Dark Lord was good enough for him to be welcomed back into the fold. Then, just when loyalty was in question amongst many other Death Eaters, Snape goes and does the one thing that secured his place by Voldemort's side. He kills Albus Dumbledore. Now, Voldemort is thinking, okay, Severus is devoted to me, he's very useful, he's powerful, he's reliable, so you can imagine his discomfort at the thought he actually had to kill Snape in order to become the true master of the Elder Wands, but in reality, that thought didn't come to mind immediately. Voldemort actually tried to use the wand, knowing it belongs to Dumbledore, knowing that Snape killed him. He felt the wand's resistance for some time, but he actually came to the decision that Snape had to die, which hints an underlying consideration of the value of Snape himself. Now I said at the beginning of this video that the Elder Wand did play a part in why Voldemort didn't use the Killing Curse, so let's talk about that now. Okay, so having learned his lesson with spells rebounding on him before, Voldemort correctly assumed that if he used the Elder Wands to cast the Killing Curse at Snape, then the exact same thing would happen just as it did all those years ago in Godric's Hollow, so he knows that the Killing Curse is off the menu. However, and this is a very big however, why doesn't he just use his old wand? The wand he's always had, and end Snape's life instantly, as he's done to so many victims before him. Because Voldemort didn't see Snape as a victim, he just seen the situation as unavoidable. He tried to use the wand without being its true master, but sadly its continued resistance meant it was time for Snape to die. So let's look at the way he died. Voldemort used the Elder Wand to slit his throat in the movie, which obviously didn't happen in the book. That scene is a massive contradiction, as the wand lacerated Snape's neck to the point he collapsed and was bleeding to death. The Elder Wand should not be able to harm its master. Anyways, referencing the book, using Nagini was the perfect way to end Snape's life, as the snake contained part of Voldemort's soul which was as close to Voldemort doing the act itself as possible. He was forced to kill Snape personally because he believed that he cannot destroy Harry Potter without having the loyalty of the undefeatable Elder Wand. Quite unlike his nature, Voldemort actually told Snape that he regretted having to murder him. He commended him on his loyalty. I feel as a gratitude for his service, Voldemort allowed Snape to die slowly. Instead of simply snuffing out his life with a killing curse, he gave him a death with full consciousness, a worthy death. Voldemort prided himself on his ability to callously snatch away life, a simple incantation to immediately take life away as he pleased. I think he arranged for Snape's death to not be as meaningless and less casual. It's not the first time he's offset the murder of someone to another person. He done it with Albus Dumbledore, and now he's done it with Severus Snape. In addition to that, Nagini struck so quickly, for all we know, Severus could have fought back. You can't defend the killing curse, but you can certainly block it with objects. Maybe Snape wouldn't have waited for Voldemort to even draw his wand either. Voldemort was assessing every single possible scenario. It wasn't just a case of Snape being the master of the Elder Wand. Though the uncertainty around the wand is what drew Voldemort to rethinking the situation in the first place. Anyway guys, with that being said, that is my explanation on why Voldemort didn't use Avada Kedavra on Snape. I want to know what you think in the comments section below. Are there any other reasons as to why he didn't use the Killing Curse? Also guys, I know I say it at the end of every video, and you know what's coming. Riddle and Animated Story is on the way. The first 30 seconds are completed, so it's not too far away now. The option is there to donate if you want to do so on my Patreon. Thank you so much for watching, have a great day and I'll see you all in the next video. Thank you so much for watching, I truly truly appreciate your support. Everyone, notifications of uploads are more important than ever, so please if you haven't already, turn those notifications on to make sure you're notified the moment my video goes live. Making videos is what I love to do, it's my dream and my passion, however it does cost time and money to produce this content, so if you have a dollar to spare to support me on Patreon, in exchange for some exclusive unseen content, then you can click the Patreon link below or at the end of this video. 
please only support me if you can afford it. And make sure to follow me on Instagram at InstaDNJ and on Twitter at Potter Folklore. Check out my other videos appearing on screen and please make sure, most importantly, to hit that subscribe button. Thanks again everyone and please have a great day.